This is the second video of reviewing the statics concepts that we need for bending stress in beams. In the previous video, we talked about the centroid of a section. Here, we want to talk about the moment of inertia. What is the physical meaning of that and how to calculate that in different sections? To understand the concept of moment of inertia, consider these two dumbbells that are spinning at the same speed. The only difference between these two dumbbells is that on the left side, the distance between spheres is more than the distance on the right dumbbells. So in this case, I want you to think about this question and answer if they are spinning at the same speed, which of these two dumbbells is going to spin for a longer time and which one is going to stop sooner? With that, I want you to think about what are the differences between these two dumbbells. Note that we can assume that the weight of the bar that is connecting two spheres is negligible, and the only factor that plays in would be the distance between two, these two spheres. The answer to this question is the left dumbbell, because it has higher momentum. In this case, we can define a mechanical property which is called moment of inertia. In this case, the moment of inertia is a quantity that determines the moment that is needed to spin the body or stop that from spinning. The higher moment of inertia means that more force or more moment is needed to rotate the element. This property depends on the axis. For both of these two dumbbells, if we want to spin them about the vertical axis, about the y-axis, they are going to have the same moment of inertia because both of these two spheres are having the same distance about the y-axis. What I want to highlight from this example is that moment of inertia is defined about axis and it would be variable depending on what is the axis that we are defining the moment of inertia about that axis. Also, mass is not the only factor that controls the moment of inertia, but also the distance between mass matters. Now let's replace mass with two-dimensional cross-section area and try to determine the moment of inertia for two-dimensional section. For moment of inertia, we show that with I, and mathematically, it's defined as integral of distance squared multiplied by dA. And that would be the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis, or Ix. Similar to that, moment of inertia about the y-axis would be x squared dA. But it is easier for us to do the integration once for different shapes and use the equations afterward. So let's calculate and develop the moment of inertia for one common shape. Consider this shape. And I want to determine what is the moment of inertia. First of all, I'm going to determine moment of inertia about the centroid, about, say, the x-axis. I can take one small area, so this is dA. But this dA could be generalized if I consider the entire width. So in that case, height of the section would be dy, and the width of the section would be b. Now I'm going to plug that into that integral equation to determine how much is moment of inertia about the x-axis. So Ix would be y squared multiplied by dA, and dA is b multiplied by dy. b is constant, so we can take it out of the integral, and integral of y squared would be y cubed over 3. Considering the location of the origin at the, height of this, at the middle of the height, we need to integrate this from negative h over 2 to positive h over 2. Now I'm going to plug the values into this equation. Now the resultant of these two terms would be bh cubed over 12, which is the well-known equation for determining the moment of inertia for rectangular shapes. So I just wanted to develop the moment of inertia for one simple shape to show you how to use the integral equation. What about the other shapes? Do we need to integrate for the other shapes and determine the moment of inertia for those shapes? We are lucky because some people have done this before for us and they put the values in a table and we are just going to use uh, the values that we have calculated before. For rectangular shapes, we got this equation, bh cubed over 12. For the other shapes and for about the different axes, we can read the values from this table. For instance, 
for a rectangle if we want to determine moment of inertia about the diagonal direction or BB axis as shown in the second figure on the left moment of inertia would be B cubed H cubed divided by 6 H squared plus B squared so moment of inertia depends on the axis and also depends on the shape so for rectangles for triangles for circles, half a circle, you can read the values from this table. Where can you find this table? The table can be found on the end of almost every textbook in statics and mechanics of materials. Also, on the course website, if you go to the references, there is one tab for equations, and you can find all of these section properties on that equation sheet. Now, we talked about the simple shapes. What if we want to determine the section properties for combined sections, like the sections that consist of a circle, a triangle, a rectangle combined together? In that case, we need to use one theory, and that is parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem says the moment of inertia is minimum about the centroid of the section. And it's shown by I sub C, or moment of inertia about the centroid. C stands for the centroid here. If we want to determine moment of inertia about any other axis, then we need to add one extra term. And that extra term would be area multiplied by distance squared. For instance, look at this shape. The axis that is passing through the centroid is shown by orange, X. If we want to determine moment of inertia about the centroid, that would be BH cubed over 12 as we just calculated. If I want to determine moment of inertia about any other axis, like that blue axis on top, x prime, in that case, we add one extra term, area of the rectangle multiplied by the distance between these two axes squared. That distance is shown by d. Okay, now I'm gonna use this for calculating the section properties for some combined sections like this one. I'm going to split that into three different sections shown in green, blue, and red. In this case, we first need to determine where is the centroid. For moment of inertia, we are going to use the parallel axis theorem, and that would be moment of inertia about the centroid of each shape plus area multiplied by distance squared. And distance would be distance of centroid of each shape to the centroid of the entire section. That is shown by D. Okay, that would make more sense if I solve a problem. As an example, let's continue working on the problem that we discussed in the previous part and we determined it's a centroid. So there is a T shape, the dimensions are provided, and we, are, we have already determined the distance of its centroid to the top portion of the section. If you want to determine what is the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis for this section, we are going to again split that into two parts. Moment of inertia about the x-axis for the combined section would be sum of the moment of inertia for each part about its centroid, which is called I sub C, C stands for the centroid, plus area multiplied by D squared. In order to facilitate the calculation, let's form a table. In the first column, we are going to write down the area which we have calculated before. The second property would be D, which is distance of the centroid of each subsection to the centroid of the entire section. To understand that, look at the top figure. Distance of centroid of section number one to top of the section would be Y1, and distance of centroid of the entire section to the top part would be Y bar. So D, as shown on the bottom figure in orange, would be Y bar minus Y1 y bar is already determined it's 2.12 inch and y1 or distance of centroid of the top section to the top part of the beam would be half of the thickness of that element which is half an inch in a similar way we can define d2 d2 would be distance of centroid of the bottom rectangle to the centroid of the entire section distance of centroid of the bottom rectangle to the top part of the beam is called y sub 2 and d sub 2 would be equal to y bar minus y2. So generally, we can say that d is equal to y bar minus y, and that could be applied for every subsection. Let's plug in the numbers. For section number one, y bar is 2.12, and y1 is half an inch. For section number two, 
y bar is 2.12, same as the previous case, and distance of its centroid to the top of section is 6. So these are d values. In the third column, we are going to write down area multiplied by distance squared, a d squared. And we are going to do that for section number 1 and section number 2. The last column would be the moment of inertia about the centroid of each subsection. We call it I sub C. Because these elements are rectangles, we know that moment of inertia for a rectangle is base height cubed over 12. There is, however, one important note here. What is base and what is height? Base is always the width of the section that is parallel to the axis of interest. And height is always perpendicular to the axis of interest. So for element number 1, base is going to be 12 and height is going to be 1. Plug that back into the equation. That would give us 1 inch to the fourth. Now let's do that for section number 2. In this case, base is going to be half an inch and height would be 10 inches. That would give us half an inch multiplied by 10 cubed over 12 which is equal to 41.7 inch to the fourth. Now, we are going to add them up together to determine how much is the total moment of inertia for the combined section. For the first section, we have the moment of inertia about the centroid, which is 1, plus AD squared, which is 31.5. For the second section, moment of inertia about the centroid is 41.7, and AD squared is 75.3. The total moment of inertia for the combined section is going to be 149.4 inch to the fourth. All right, I just wanted to present one simple example on how to use the parallel axis theorem for determining the moment of inertia in a combined section. Even though this problem was pretty simple, the same concept could be used for more complicated cases. There are some other examples that if you're interested, you can go ahead and review them. All right, thank you very much and I will see you later.